All right, family, it's D. Orlando Fortune back with another season of Inspirational Talks. Today, we're going to be the opening of the series on focus. We're going to throw some other things in there throughout the rest of the season, but we're talking about focus. Today, in particular, we're going to talk about you have a brain, use it! Okay, so today's specifically we're talking about you have a brain, so use it. And it's so interesting to me right now that I, I finished a book uh, recently by ben, about Ben Carson. Those of you who don't know Ben Carson, he's a heavily acclaimed neurosurgeon um, at Johns Hopkins University. Now, the thing that's so interesting about this man, among other things, what's interesting to me about this young man is he's a black man that went through all these struggles. Okay, so in the, coming up to a time where it wasn't very looked upon for people of color to to be able to succeed in an industry such as medical schools, he's a neurosurgeon, not only a neurosurgeon, but he's a neurosurgeon for infants and children. Wow. Now, let's just get interesting facts about this thing. Now, his father left him, left his family at eight years old. And at eight years old, he made a decision to become something. He wanted to become a missionary doctor. There's an interesting story I want to read about that. Here's what, here's what happened. And I want to read this story that happened. He was actually at church, and what he says is this. Ben found it tough to give up his hopes for a happy home where his family could all live together again. But the, one, the same year his father left, a new dream entered Ben's life. Ben's dream was born on a Sunday morning during church. Ben sat on the edge of the pew listening intently, and the minister told an exciting, truly, excitingly true story about a missionary doctor. Roberts were chasing the doctor and his wife, the minister told them. They ran fast as they could around trees and over rocks, trying to stay ahead of their pursuers. Then they came to the edge of a cliff. They had nowhere to go, but right at the very brink of the, pre of the precipice, they spotted a crack just big enough for both of them to crawl into. When the bandits got to the cliff, there would be victims, uh, there would be victory, victims where nobody to be seen, nowhere to be seen. It was if the doctor and the wife had vanished. The robbers didn't know what to think. They stomped around cursing, then left. The missionaries were safe. As the story ended, Ben breathed a sigh of relief. <sighs> what a thrilling life missionaries must leave. God had his missionaries in the cleft of the rock, the pastor explained. And he would do the same for you if you give your heart, him your heart and let him protect you from, the, from harm. And continue on, he says, After listening to that exciting story, Ben knew two things. He wanted Jesus to watch over him, and he knew what he wanted to do with his life. I know what I wanted to be when I grew up, Ben told his mother as they walked home from the church that day. A missionary doctor. His mother stopped to look right at him. Benny, he said, if you ask the Lord for something and believe he would do it, it will happen. Now, what does this mean to me? Here, here's what I'm saying here. He had a, a goal that he really wanted at eight years old. A tragedy happened and he decides that I'm going to become something. And he had this goal in his life. Now, over the course of the time, he's, he's, he's been considered a dummy in classes. Even though he's very, he seemed to be very smart, he ended up getting called a school dummy, right? And he starts making these changes in his life. As, as people enter his life, he started changing things that goes on in life. Because his focus was on becoming a doctor. There was no change in that. He was becoming a doctor. Okay? But he ends up attending Yale University and the University of Michigan uh, School of Medicine. All right? He ends up uh, as a residency, residency at Johns Hopkins Medical Institution, one of the most renowned institutions in the world. And on his way... Um, on his way to becoming named Chief of Pediatric Neurosurgery by the age of 33. So from 18, 8 years old to 33, that's 25 years of constantly focusing on being a doctor. 25 years focused on being that one thing, becoming a doctor. Now, this thing pays off because here, here, here's some more extra understanding of what it means to be focused. Now, for 8 hours... Eight hours of focus to perform a hem hemospherectomy 
on Miranda Francisco. And this is the first time this surgery been, has ever happened, had ever happened at the time. At eight hours to actually remove a whole half of a person's brain. Never surgery, never been done. He did it. Took eight hours. That's focus. Okay. Then he goes on, the years later, he does uh, for 22 hours of focus to separate, now the word, I may not say this right, craniopagus, Siamese twins. Their names were uh, Patrick and Ben Binder. It took 22 hours to separate these twins. They survived. 22 hours of focused attention on these kids. Okay. Then he did it again later uh, for uh, on Joseph and Luca Banda. Banda. They're out from Africa. It took 28 hours for that surgery. Now these are just that's 22, 28 hours over a day of focus on separating these Siamese twins. I mean, he's cutting their skulls open, going to the brains, and separating blood vessels. All types of intricate work that he had to do. That's focus. Now, what I bring, what I want to point out about this work, this thing about focus here is this. Three points. First off, he, he said he had to have a goal and that that goal must that goal must be something you must want to achieve. You must visualize it. The brain is so extraordinary. You visualize a goal and you pray about it. You focus focus on a goal, pray about it, and then go to get to work. Focus on a goal, pray about it, and get to work. So that's thing one. Thing two is this. Eliminate distractions and learn. He said this, the key the key uh, equalizer for him from becoming the dummy to becoming one of the best neurosurgeons in the world in history, in history was education. You had to learn something new. Eliminate all the distractions that's keeping you from going where you want to go. Focus. That's part of focus. Eliminate distractions and learn what you need to learn to get to where you want to go to achieve those goals. The other third, the third thing I want to point out is this. Overcome your struggle. Overcome your struggles. And this is where he gets his thing, because his mother always told him, he and his brother, when they overcame up to some struggle, something that was stopping them from going where they want to go, something they couldn't figure out, the mother would say to them, Do you have a brain? I'm to asking you right now, do you have a brain? There's some things you want to achieve in this life. We focus, we're, we're talking about focus. Focusing in on what you want to get requires you to do these simple things. From this Ben Carson story. And the key thing to that is, do you have a brain? I know you do because you're watching this, right? You're alive. Use it. Use it to overcome the struggles. Use it to visualize and focus on a goal that you want. To achieve. Use it to help you pray. Use it to eliminate the distractions that are keeping you from, they take you off your path. Use it to learn the things that you need to do in order to get down the path you want to go. Use your brain so we can focus. Now tune in for me next, next, uh, next week. We're going to another principles on this Focus series. I'm glad to be back, family. Season three coming at you. And remember, we're going to help you live a life of no doubt, just blessings. You can have all those things you want in your life because God wants you to have them if you only believe. I love you.